Hello, hello everyone. Another video tonight and this time is about the hypersensitive reactions. So what is a hypersensitive reaction? Um, pretty much is a overreaction of the immune system against an allergen or an antigen. Yes, the immune system can react uh, against its own tissues, but in this particular one, we're going to talk about like just reacting against something. And most of the times it's an allergen and an antigen. It can manifest in different kind of categories or different ways. And so it could be a skin reaction, like your first photo here, like this little one has a hives. Uh, which are this red patches, flat patches. It could be itching, maybe like an insect, just uh, maybe bit you and you're just allergic to the insect. insect. Uh, it could be dermatitis, like inflammation of the skin. But it could also be respiratory reactions like angioedema. I'm sorry, respiratory reactions like asthma or allergies. And we will talk about these in the, um, in the other videos and also in lecture. Um, in the asthma, asthma, you will find it in the lower respiratory disease lecture and allergies in your upper respiratory disease. But in the worst case, it could be systemic reactions. The immune system kind of goes nuts, doesn't like it, and it reflects into this angioedema where all your vessels just start popping and you just have this swelling all over, uh, just as this picture here. Uh, you can have your eyes swell, swell up or your lips, your throat, and you can also have an anaphylactic reaction where your uh, airway closes, swells up, and you cannot breathe and could lead to death. Typically, a reaction of a hypersensitivity happens fairly quickly on most uh, people. However, um, there is occasions where you could have a delay response. Let's say, here we are, I've ate, I've ate uh, shrimps several times. I never had a problem, but today I ate shrimps and boom, I had hives and angioedema and shortness of breath and whatever. Well, that's a delay response. Um, so regardless whether it's a delay or your first response to an allergen, what do we do first? The first thing that we need to do is, depending if it's happening right in front of you, then you're gonna act and you're gonna protect the airway. But in general, I'm talking in general, what do we do? The first thing that you do is that you ask the correct questions. You ask the investigating questions. You're gonna ask about family, history or personal history about allergens or allergies. So for example, has this happened to you before? Do you have anyone in your family that experiences, you know, um, that you know of? You're also going to be asking any medications over the counter that the, the, the patient maybe uh, took. Or when do you normally notice the symptoms? Is it season related? Is it activity related? What are the specific symptoms? As I mentioned earlier, they could be respiratory system, they could be systemic or skin reactions. So what is exactly the reaction or the symptoms? And then what did you eat or didn't eat? Uh, kind of like a daily or weekly log of activities in food that you ingested. You're going to find very uh, soon that there are different things that can provoke a hypersensitivity reaction from grass to uh, different flowers or trees to foods 
to latex, to different materials, even clothing, um, even detergents. So again, there's so many things that people can be allergic to. So first figure out what's causing the reaction. And how do we figure out what's causing the reaction is when this is happening, the patient is instructed to get a skin test, an allergy skin test. It's the preferred method. And what they do is that they inject you with different or common things that people are allergic to. It could be done in the back, just as this picture that I'm showing here, or in the arm, kind of like in your forearm. And so um, they inject you with just a tiny bit and see if you react. So as you can see on this photo here that I'm having, we don't know what the kiddo was injected with, but we can definitely tell that he's allergic to certain things because his um, bag is red and it uh, has the hives and is swollen. Prior to getting an allergy test, you have to stop all medications that are antihistamines or steroids, because if you don't stop them, then your immune system is not going to be working like it normally does. Remember antihistamines? They tell your immune system, stop, don't produce histamines in reaction to the allergen. And so if you're taking it, your immune system is not going to do that. Steroids weaken the immune system. So again, you know, if you're taking it, your immune system is not acting normal. When they're getting the testing done, you have to stay with the patient at all times, because what about if they get an, 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 an anaphylactic reaction, um, then you have to do measures. You got to protect the airway. Uh, so you never leave your patients alone. The results are within minutes or sometimes it can take a few hours, uh, two days, 48 hours. And you always want to have your rescue EpiPen, uh, epinephrine pen near you or near the patient in the event that they get a severe anaphylactic reaction. So what do we do to treat it? Um, now that we've diagnosed it, well, what, do, what are some options? So first and foremost, you want to identify what it is and try to avoid it by a diary or an allergy testing um, uh, procedure. You want to give antihistamines, you want to give corticosteroids, uh, maybe you want to give topical anti-itching drugs, um, there's Benadryl that it comes in creams and there's other, uh, topical, uh, over the counter things that you can also put when people are itching. There's something called immunotherapy. And basically how these, uh, how these work is that, um, they're typically used when everything else has failed. It's not going to be the first thing that someone is going to go unless you're really severe. They're going to try the, the lowest cost, the, the thing that people can get over the counter, like antihistamines and corticosteroids. Uh, but in general, what they do is that they inject you with what you are allergic to in very, very tiny doses to desensitize you. Um, and then they go increasing the dose little by little um, because if they give you a big dose, then of course your immune system can go like, oh no, I'm not having this and can go crazy. Uh, so increasing it little by little will des desensitize your immune system and maybe you're not going to respond as severe the next time you are uh, exposed to it. And so it could be sub Q or sublingual. Um, the chance of reaction increases, uh, the risk of reaction increases every time the dose is um, 
uh, increase. So therefore you always, always have to have your EpiPen near you. Um, and they're called allergy shots or immunotherapy. Let's talk about what, what a anaphylactic reaction is. Well, this is very severe. It's very serious. This reaction can occur within minutes and can be life-threatening. Uh, it causes bronchial constriction, uh, airway obstruction, and the vascular collapse. So basically everything stops shutting down. You stop breathing, your blood pressure drops, and you kind of go into cardiac arrest. Uh, so symptoms are edema, swelling of the side or itching of the side, um, angioedema, cough, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and then your shock symptoms like weak pulse, hypertension, dilated pupils, shortness of breath, and blue uh, cyanosis around your lips. Um, different things, as I mentioned earlier, can cause an allergic reaction or an aphylactic reaction. Medications such as aspirin, Lots of antibiotics, especially uh, cephalosporins or penicillin, insulin, um, foods like eggs, milk, nuts, strawberries, chocolate, fish or shellfish products, um, iodine, animals. Uh, so there's different things that people can be allergic. I personally will tell you that when I was a little uh, girl, I did a allergy skin test as well, because I was very allergic to different things and I would always get sick. And they told me that I was allergic to peanuts and that I would never be able to eat peanuts. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but I kept eating peanuts. And today I eat peanuts and nothing happens to me. Uh, I do suffer from allergies, but I never had an anaphylactic reaction or I never had anything bad. But the skin testing showed that I was allergic to peanuts. So allergies can be grown out of them. Like someone can grow out of them. Um, if you have... Um, uh, an anaphylactic reaction, you really have to, you know, call 911 and, um, and have it checked out and go to, or go to the emergency room if your EpiPen worked. Uh, so think about this, uh, as a overreaction. Oh my God, everything it's occluded. Think about an accident when you have an accident in the freeway and everyone shows up. Uh, you got your fire truck, your ambulance, your police officers, your wrecks, uh, your trek, uh, your record uh, trucks. And so it occludes in it, the, the highway is bombarded. Well, the same thing, this is your airways and everything is bombarded. Uh, so it's life-threatening. We treat it by keeping your airway open. And that could be as bad as intubation. If the patient has their throat swelled up and can't breathe, you give epinephrine intramuscular. Um, it's approximately 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams. Uh, and you can repeat it every five to 15 minutes. You give them albuterol, and albuterol is a bronchodilator. It dilates your bronchi. Um, you give them Benadryl or diphenhydramine to tell the immune system, stop, slow down, don't react anymore. You give them corticosteroids, you administer oxygen, and you reverse their hypertension um, by basically putting their legs up, giving them fluids or other medications that elevate blood pressure.
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when someone is having an anaphylactic reaction and their throat is closed up, their airway is closed up, you can't go and give them oxygen. They can't breathe. So you have to open the airway first by epinephrine, um, albuterol, uh, maybe steroids. And then in the meantime, also give them oxygen. So just treating them with oxygen is not going to cut it because their airway is closed. We have to open it first. So some of the nursing considerations are that if it's an insect, like if it's an animal, a lot of people are allergic to bees. I take that stinger, you know, out because that's where the, the toxin, the venom is, you know, then bees don't have venoms, but um, like if you're bitten by, um, by a, what do you call them? Um, snake or whatever. Um, so yeah, so, so the, the stinger has the toxin. So remove that, or if you're bitten by something venomous, um, then tie the extremity. So that way it doesn't spread into the tissue, um, and continue to maintain their airway open, monitor the level of consciousness, monitor their vital signs, and make sure that you're watching their respiratory and urine output. The next thing is that we need to teach them how to use their EpiPen. Someone that it has allergies, they all need to be trained, not only them, but also their families and their people, the people that are close to them. So for example, I have a friend that she is allergic to uh, shellfish, like uh, shrimp and things like that. Well, she carries her EpiPen with her. And when I started going out with her, when I started working out with her and we would go eat afterwards, she introduced that to me. She said, hey, I'm allergic to this. My EpiPen is in my gym bag so or purse in case that something happens to me. This is where you're going to go get it. So the people that you hang out with, they need to know where's your EpiPen and how to use it. Believe me, there's a lot of people that don't know how to use an EpiPen. So they usually come all packed and all ready to go. By the way, they're very expensive without insurance. Um, they treat anaphylactic reaction. You need to have them in your possession at all time. Again, you need to educate the patient on how to use it, the family in those clothes. You need to watch out for the expiration. They do expire and it's on, the, on their label. Um, you inject it in their, thigh, in their thigh and you basically remove the cap, point it downwards. Then there's like a safety thing that you pull out and you firmly just um, put it against the middle of your outer thigh and push the out auto injector and wait about three seconds until the medicine is fully inserted or injected into the arm muscle. So you can like inject it and remove it quickly. You gotta, you gotta wait a few seconds. Uh, repeat the dose if, um, if the patient doesn't get better and always, always seek medical help on your book on page 200, you have the teaching layer to review it and um, basically fill in what I did not mention. Let's talk about another allergy that a lot of people have is latex and latex, you know, it's been increasing uh, in the recent years a lot. A lot more and more people are allergic to latex because uh, it's being used and also because of latex gloves. Um, it can cause two different types of reaction, uh, dermatitis, so just a skin reaction, but as well as like an allergic reaction where you have redness and um, asthma, hives, etc. 
Um, the dermatitis just shows as dryness, itching, flaky, crackling uh, of your skin. Let's see what else I want to tell you. Um, always ask the patient about allergy medications and allergies to latex, not just medications. There is a lot of products in the hospital that now are latex free. However, there's still some that are there and you have to know and you have to read carefully because they're in like small little prints in the hospital um, before you give it to someone or have contact with your patient that has uh, latex allergy. So it's better to be uh, super, super um, careful. Now, um, when people react to latex, they react to this protein in rubber that it has. And there's a lot of foods that have this same protein. So we're going to see a correlation between certain foods and latex. And I'm going to talk about those here in just a minute. Uh, always educate the patient to wear a medical alert bracelet saying that they are allergic to latex and carry their EpiPen always. So there is something called latex food syndrome. Um, and as I was saying, it, the foods, certain foods contain this rubber protein uh, that we want to avoid. So if someone is allergic to latex, they need to avoid these uh, types of foods. So the most commons are bananas, avocado, chestnut, kiwi, tomato, melon, celery, carrots, potatoes, hazelnuts, wheat, peach, grapes, shellfish. Um, I'm sure there's more. I'm giving you a table here. Uh, so pretty much uh, just avoid them and always have that correlation between food and latex. Okay, I think this is it. Um, again, my references are, I got my information from the textbook and all my images are either from the textbook or from Google. I hope this was helpful and I will see you on the next video.